Okay, so we're starting our new external topic on probability. And this is an external for four credits. And we'll just get straight into it with the basics. So probability, like you probably already know, is the number that represents the chance of a random event happening. And when we talk about theoretical probability, this definition is for a probability of an event occurring in a perfect world. So we calculate it based on what we know about all the possible outcomes and assume that everything will happen fairly. This is something like flipping a coin. We'd expect to get a head half the time and a tail the other half of the time. And an event, when we talk about that, the event is basically see what um, the event is basically what we see happen, um, such as getting the head when you flip a coin or rolling a dice and getting a three. The event is the three or the head. What actually happened? And we use the notation P bracket E, and that could be something else, like P bracket an odd number. Um, but whatever you put in there, that's the event for E. So any event that you have, for instance, P bracket H for heads, if you're flipping a coin, it just means the probability of that event happening, or something like the probability of an odd number on a dice, or the probability of getting a head. And P E can be a fraction or a decimal. And that goes between 0 and 1. And I want you to keep in mind, we often think about probabilities as percentages, but don't use percentages unless, um, unless you're asked to use a percentage. Really keep it as a decimal or a fraction. Now, a probability of event occurring is equal to 0 means it's impossible. and it's basically not going to happen. So impossible or not going to happen. Probability of an event happening that's equal to 1 means this is a certainty. It will happen. We know it. And probability of 0 0.5, well this is it's going to happen half the time. So likely to occur half of the time. And we've got words that we can think about that go between those ranges like likely or unlikely, very likely, very unlikely, but you get the idea. And the word outcomes, when you hear that talked about, it's basically all the possible events that could happen. So again, flipping a coin, I can do things like get a head or a tail. So the first situations we're going to think about are when we have equally likely outcomes. And these are random situations where anything that can happen, all the available outcomes are equally likely to happen. So for instance, when I roll a die, assuming it's a six-sided die, I have six outcomes that I can have happen. I could get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So a total of six. If I'm tossing a coin, my outcomes are heads or tails, total of two outcomes. And other examples could be like playing from a deck of cards um, or in a lotto ball out of a barrel. Now another definition for us is going to be a sample space. Um, and we sometimes refer to this as S. And this is the complete set of all possible outcomes in a random experiment. So in S means number of possible outcomes in the sample space. So for instance, for rolling a die, I had six possible outcomes, so in bracket S would be equal to six. And in E means number of um, I want to say that number of possible I'll rephrase that. Sorry if you're already writing. Possible number of times an event occurs. So for instance, when I'm looking at rolling a die again, if I'm thinking about even so if we're looking at the even number of out the even numbers, I have one, two, 
three times that I can get an even number. So if my event is even numbers when I'm rolling a die, I've got three of those out of six. And our definition for probability, if you're going to think about trying to find the probability of anything, we've got this very mathematical looking fancy thing that we can say where the probability of event is equal to the number of times that event might occur out of the total number possible. But let's just break that down into something slightly less obscure here. And let's just put desired out of total. So we'll take a look at how that works again, but if you just think about the number of times something happens that you want, what's desired, and the number of total possibilities that there are, that will get you your probability. So when a dice is rolled, or a die is rolled, the, samples, um, the sample space has six equally like com outcomes, like we've said here. So the number in my sample space, the total possible for me, is six. So the probability of getting a three, well, how many times can I get a three when I roll a die? That's just one out of six. Because there's only one way of getting a three when you roll the dice. Probability of getting an even number, well, we already looked at that. If I think about my even number, it's a two, a four, or a six. I've got three chances of that happening, so three out of the six total. Again, because there's three options out of six total. The probability of the number being less than five, if we think about that, a number less than five, well that's a one, a two, a three, a four, and that does not include five because I'm saying less than five, not less than or equal to five. So that's four outcomes out of the six total because there are four possibilities less than five. So another thing you might want to keep in mind with probabilities is you probably do want to simplify your fractions if you can. So three out of six is one half, and as a decimal that's 0 0.5, either of those would be okay. This one's going to be two out of three, or equal to 0 0.667, and again, either of those would be okay. Your calculator will help you simplify those if you need it. So taking a look at example two, when a well-shuffled pack of cards is cut, the card showing could be any one of how many different cards do we have? In total, we have 52 cards in a deck, and I'm showing them all to you here if you need to actually pay attention to what's in a deck of cards. We have an ace, then we have a jack, king, and a queen and a king, and we've got 2 to 10 as numbers. You also have 4 suits. There's 13 of each suit, and 4 of each type of card. And these ones down here are considered the face cards. So if I ask you out of this deck of cards, the probability that I shuffle it and pull a card out and I get it to be a heart, well how many hearts do I have out of how many total possible? Because we think we're going to think about that again. That's desired out of total for the probability. And the ones I want, the ones that are desired, are the hearts. And I know I've got 13 hearts out of 52 total. 13 out of 52. And that simplifies to one quarter, which should make sense because hearts are one quarter of the deck because there's four suits. Probability of getting a red card. Well, I've got 13 hearts and 13 diamonds, and I also know that half the deck is red. So in total, that's 26 out of 52, which also simplifies to one half. Queen of spades? Well, how many queens of spades are there in the whole deck? If I'm thinking about desired outcomes out of total possible, well, my queen of spades, she only happens once, right here. So that is, to me, I only have one option out of 52 that that can happen with. So it'll be one out of 52. And you can leave it like that. You don't need to put it into your calculator or turn it into a decimal if you don't want. And one out of 52 is as simplified as it gets. So we'll look at um, one more example here. 
when a 10 cent coin and a 20 cent coin are tossed together. So I have two different coins. How many outcomes are there possible? So something that can be really helpful for you, if you need to, is draw up a table to show outcomes. So if I think about this one being the 20 cent coin and this one over here being the 10 cent coin, I can either get a head or a tail on the 20 cent coin and I can also get a head or a tail on the 10 cent coin. Maybe I'll change color on that one. Oops. So I could get a head out of my 10 cent and a head there or I could get a tail and a tail and with the other coin I've got the possibility of getting a head and a head from both a head and a tail a tail and a head or a tail and a tail so here you can see that's showing me all the possibilities if I combine those for the head the head from the 20 and the head and the head from the 10 I've got a total of four outcomes so from here I now want to think about what's the probability that I get two heads? How many times does that happen out of four? You can see two heads actually only happens once, so that's one out of four times, or 0 0.25. So always thinking about, again, wanted out of total or desired out of total. So I'm looking for two heads, that's what I'm looking for, it's what I want out of four total. And the next one, the probability of one head and one tail. Well, one head and one tail. That can happen here where I get the 10 cent tail and the 20 cent head. Or it can happen over here where I get the 10 cent head and the 20 cent tail. But in total, that's two times out of four. That's also equal to a half or equal to 0 0.5. So if you need to, drawing up a table for your outcomes can be helpful. And if you don't need a table, sometimes you can just write out all the different possibilities for yourself. But once you know how many total there are, calculating your probability is not that hard if you know how many out of that total group you want.